Today you get to meet the craziest component I've ever purchased. Don't take it out on me. I'm simply showing you what we have available in the audio industry that we all love. Do you want to know what this is? Let's find out. Welcome back everybody. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for celebrating my madness. <laughs> and today we have a special, special component. A special component, and I call it a component because it is a component, that MSRP is for $80,000 in its current version, I believe. And of course, you know how we do it here in my lab. We go for the ultra high end. We go for those things that, unfortunately, average mortals cannot afford. But that's what's cool about what I do. The fact that I show you things that you probably would never see or hear of on YouTube or even magazines or perhaps your next door neighbor. But I am going to show you what this is. Let me preface this by saying the following. Okay? Okay. Do not kill the messenger. I am the messenger. Don't kill me. Don't prosecute me. Don't do a drive-by. Don't do an AK-47. Don't shoot me with your AK-47. Okay? I am simply communicating. I am simply reporting okay, what exists in the audio world. Anyway, let me open this component so that you see what I have in front of me. You are going to be <laughs> probably not surprised. Hopefully you can read that. Let me show you what this is in case you still cannot make out the writing on the box. I am going to show you nice nice road case by the way. Love the packaging. Are you all ready to see this? You all ready to see this? Okay, I'm going to show you the extreme. This is an $80,000 transparent Magnum Opus speaker cable. Look at this. $80,000. Let's put it right here, as you can see, for you all gold plated see. spades on both ends. It is calibrated to boulder amplification. Now, in case you are not sure what that means, give me one second. Let me open the paperwork that came with the cable. So you get a folder where it shows you the cable model and I'm going to share with you what this has hopefully you can see it so let me get close to the camera okay you can see it was calibrated in uh, July 6 of 2020 and it was calibrated and calibrated for Boulder 2160 stereo amplifier an amplifier an amplifier that I've owned here many times also, it tells you the type of termination that it has, okay, and it tells you the speaker that it will be connected to, the Magical M6. Apparently, this person had the Magical M6. Average room temperature. The average room temperature shows 70 Fahrenheit. Yes, I'm not making any of this up, but this is part of the literature that comes with this transparent magnum opus speaker cable. Actually, let's do this. <laughs> let's put the speaker cable aside. Let me show you something else. How about we do this? Show you another piece. What do you think this is? This is $40,000. $40,000 MSRP. Let's open it. 
By the way, I love this. I love the case, the, you know, the packaging material. Let's go over this real quick so I can tell you. This one seems to be calibrated. It's another cable, of course. I don't have the calibration sheet. Interesting. Okay. This is a $40,000 XLR Magnum Opus. $40,000 right here in my hands. Okay. So these are the things that you see in the ultra high-end world. So, same thing, the cable needs to get calibrated. I'm going to go over the calibrations in a minute. Okay, so let me get this out of the way so that I can begin to talk about what you all want to know. But before I do that, let me show you something else. Let's put this puppy here. Okay, and why don't we do this? Let's bring its younger sibling. This is the, look at this. We have the $40,000 transparent Opus speaker cable. The $80,000 transparent Magnum Opus. I have both. When I look at them, there's a forty thousand dollar gap, okay, between both of them. When I look at them, I can see definitely that the Opus, the Magnum Opus, is a little thicker, probably thicker gauge. Terminations identical. Let me feel the weight. Okay, eh, weight is about about the same, I would say, very close. But anyway, but anyway if you are wondering about calibration. What does that even mean, Jay? What do you mean calibrate the cables? So this is what that means, okay? It means that anytime you change a component, whether it be your source, your preamplifier, or your amplifiers, not the speakers, the speakers don't matter, you have to essentially send the cables back to transparent so they can they can tweak them. They can calibrate them. The calibration takes place right here with what you're seeing. Right here, what you're seeing on your screen is the network box. This is essentially what they open up. Somehow, there's some bolts underneath. Okay, they open it up, and with that, they begin to tweak the inside of this box, matching the impedances of the electronics okay that's supposed to make a big difference I have done that with my transparent opus I have actually sent them to get recalibrated if you're asking me was there a difference I would say yes there was a difference when it was calibrated I'm not gonna lie here okay I'm gonna tell it like it is there was a difference when I didn't have it calibrated it felt like it was a lot brighter the presentation was a little too much okay but here's what you may not know. If you buy any of these cables on the used market, so let's say you find them on the used market on a website somewhere, right? And you buy it, and you're not paying attention to the calibration, okay? Meaning, what amplifier are these speaker cables calibrated to? What preamplifier and source are the XLRs calibrated to? You might be buying a speaker cable or an XLR that may not be properly tuned to your system. Once again, I'm the messenger. Don't go out there saying this guy has turned into a madman. He's nuts. He's crazy. I'm only the messenger. So I'm showing you much more. This cable that I bought recently is calibrated, as I mentioned, to the 2160. But the impedance, the output impedance of my amplifier, the 3050s, is identical. So no need to recalibrate my speaker cable. So this is going to work just fine. But here's the one thing you have to remember. Anytime you do calibrations for these, you have to get like a, an authorization. You have to get like an authorization from Transparent. So you have to go through your dealer, 
transparent dealer. They submit that. Transparent gets the form as far as like what the intent is, what amplifier are you going to be using, and then you have to ship out the cables. So you have to pay for that shipping charge. Transparent pays for the shipping back to you. That takes about two to three weeks. So you're going to be out of cables for about two to three weeks on average. Okay, that's how long it took me when I got these calibrated, about two to three weeks. Now, the problem is when the cables are not recertified. What the hell does that mean? Well, that means that if, let's say, you were to buy a cable that doesn't have additional tune-ups, adjustments, what happens is you have to pay a price to transparent. What? to what they call a recertification just to put it into perspective okay let's say tomorrow i were to buy a griffin amplifier and i was going to play with griffin amplifiers this will still work it won't be a problem but it's not going to be properly tuned for griffin so what happens is i have to contact a transparent dealer and see how can i get this calibrated well, I found out in that calibration, which recertifies the cable, meaning I can get as many tune-ups as I want going forward. Are you all ready for this? Are you sitting down? I have to pay $9,500. Well, I'm not stuttering. $9,500. So basically what happens is once these cables come out of warranty or they switched hands or they're not going to the original owner what happens at that moment is you can no longer continue to calibrate it to your liking you have to pay for that recertification a one-time fee to you as many times as you want it recalibrate it going forward but also keep this in mind okay xlr right here this xlr approximately cost this xlr would cost about 4500 bucks to recertify so right now this xlr i think it's calibrated can't remember i don't believe it's calibrated for boulder i think it's calibrated for msb so guess what i don't have an msb deck can i use it yes absolutely i can use it with my esoteric i'm probably gonna be amazed with how it sounds however to do things right I would have to contact the dealer and get this cable um, recertified so that I can send it in as many times as I want to transparent and that's going to cost me 4500 bucks. So what am I getting at? Why am I doing this? First, I will say that although I have not heard the Magnum Opus, I have no doubt in my mind that I am going to be in for a treat. At $80,000, I have high expectations for this speaker cable. Now, I do have my own cable line. If you care to know what that is, please see my website, jaysaudiolab.com, where you can find more information about Authentic Audio Image, which is the cable brand that I represent. But I don't expect my cable brand to be able to take on an $80,000 speaker cable. And I'm okay with that. I'm 100% mentally ready to accept that. But I have high expectations for an $80,000 speaker cable. And I justify the purchase because of the level of speaker that I have. $350,000 speaker. So you see, when you have this level of loudspeaker, I am okay spending the money to buy a speaker cable of this caliber. I'm okay trying things. I want to see if it even makes sense. If it does something I never heard my speaker do. I am curious to know. I want to know and investigate further. I'm getting deep, really deep into the cable conversations. This is why I have an interview coming soon with MIT Cables, okay? The owner of MIT Cables. Him and I are talking, and if you know MIT Cables, they also use network boxes. Him and I are talking, and if you know MIT Cables, they have a speaker cable that I believe MSRP is for $100,000, so they even have more expensive cables. So him and I are going to talk. We're going to have a discussion about cables. He is open. He's going to be an open book about what makes the cable so expensive, what's in the boxes, some amplifier brands, full transparency have told me, we do not advise for anyone to use speaker cables with boxes. We have had issues with that. It can create problems with our amplification. It can lead to overheating problems. 
So I have heard that from certain amplifier brands, but I want to talk to him. I want to see if we can have a very smart conversation as to why in the world we have speaker cables that are so much money. What is really the intent? Who buys all of this? Besides me, of course, clearly, but that's not the point. Who in their right mind spends $80,000 on a speaker cable? Somebody did. I'm sure somebody bought this. I didn't buy it brand new, if you're wondering. I'm showing it to you. But somebody paid $80,000. Now, before I give you my opinion on the cable, I have to connect it. I have to listen to it. I have to sit with it. Let it settle. Do we get $80,000 worth of improvements? Again, I don't know. I'm just a guy who is inquisitive about this stuff. This is why I put my money where my mouth is. You're seeing it here. I live with the ultra high end. And again, I repeat myself for a fourth time. Don't shoot me. I'm only sharing with you what exists. And this is why I am looking forward to interviewing the president, the owner of MIT Cables. I want to know from him why are cables getting so expensive and what's so amazing what is it that they do do they add anything to the presentation are they making the sound go in a certain direction by tuning inside of these boxes i have no answers i'm not a cable designer but for now tell me what do you think about this what is your opinion on expensive ultra high-end cables like these do you think they're worth their asking price have you ever owned one of these or tell me tell me underneath what have you owned? Did you find any benefits? What is your opinion on these cables? Please, be nice. Don't attack. Don't kill anyone in the comment section. I want to read great constructive criticism, feedback, commentary, because we should make this hobby fun. Not kill each other. Not really try to murder each other because we have differences of opinion. At the end of the day, it is a subjective hobby, right? And I'm not here to do a drive-by on anybody or accuse any cable or any speaker of anything. I'm here just to open up a discussion and figure things out with you all. Stay tuned for more. Oh, yeah. And I'll be back soon with these. Peace.